Employee recognition, is it overrated and how much should you give? Hi everybody, I'm Teresa Marr of your jobbing community and I'm joined today by Chester Eldon, world renowned speaker and author. <laughs> Chester, thank you so much for joining us. No, thanks for having me, I appreciate you. Now you talk about employee recognition quite often. It sounds very simple. Somebody does a great job and you provide recognition for that. But are companies really doing that today? Uh, well, I think they think they are. You know, we've done a lot of research and you talk to upper management and say, you know, we're above average. And then middle management says, oh, we're okay. And then you talk to employees and they go, no, 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 you stink at this. <laughs> you know, I, I think particularly now, uh, you have to have a strategy behind pretty much everything. And those companies that have a recognition strategy and implement some very simple principles uh, get much superior results than those that just think showing up saying, hey, great job, is, you know, employee morale and an employee recognition program. Absolutely. So talking about the different levels of manage management, sometimes managers can say, I'm really busy, I have a list of things to do, we're all, you know, have a lot on our plates today. Is it really going to make a difference if I stop what I'm doing and say, hey, great job, Frank? Is it? Yeah, well, the, the simple answer is yes. Do you have another question? No, I'm okay. kidding. <laughs> you know, the, the simple answer is yes. But, but the point is, is that managers say they don't have time. Well, no one has time. Right? And so I'd love to ask managers, say, sure, you don't have time to stop and tell somebody they're doing well and, or encourage them. But let me ask you this, when somebody screws up, how much time have you got? And then they're on a, as they say, uh, like a duck on a June bug, which is an expression I picked up in Dallas. Um, yeah, so you say, well, you know, I understand as managers, we think we're problem solvers. We, you know, we look for problems. Well, I think we've got to adapt the attitude and say, I'm going to look for success as well and make time for that because we've proved it out with all the data that we had in the carrot principle, available to find bookstores everywhere, um, that those managers that were high appreciators actually got to their business results faster. So that, I think, is the big impetus. Don't do it just to be a nice guy or make your mother proud of you, and I'm sure your mother is proud of you. But the point is, is that if I can show a business acumen, if I can show a business result, now I've even got more of a reason to do it. And, and the fact is, it's fun and it creates a better environment, so why wouldn't you? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, Chester, I've actually heard you talk about the fact that general praise really doesn't have much impact. What does that mean? Well, you know, specificity rules the day, as in anything, you know. And I always, I, I, you know, we joke about managers that go, no, you're the best, no, you're the best, you know. You rock, you all rock. And uh, it doesn't mean anything. Um, specificity does. If I say, hey, Teresa, I really love the way you, you got those interviews and, and the background and the light and delivered on time. And, you know, the added value to jobbing is that we bring in these experts. And, and, and it really does build our community that we're the place to go when you talk about employment. That's a lot better than love the hair, you and the teeth. You got it going on, girl. You know what I mean? So specificity. And, and the simple reason behind that is rewarded behavior gets repeated. So you want to reward the right behavior. Well, if I don't give specific behavior to be repeated, what, what is it that I'm doing to be so great? Absolutely. So that's where it makes sense. Makes complete sense. So is there such thing as providing too much or overdoing it in recognition? You know, we ask this question a lot as well, and, it, and it's, it's obvious people say, yeah, but if I do it too much, will people get complacent? Will they always ask for raises? And Will they take advantage of me? And the answer is no, no, they won't. And again, it comes back to that specificity. We talk about you've got to be frequent in your praise to reinforce that message, communication, specificity to get that right behavior uh, repeated, and then timely, do it, do it right away. The fact is, is that we are really so busy. Um, Franklin Covey did this great study about how much praise in a given day is too much. And the number was 13. So 13 incidences in a given day. Number 14, it starts to tail off. Not that it's not effective, but it starts to tail off. I think you'd be hard pressed to find employees in today's workforce that are saying, yeah, I got praised 25 times today. Right. You know, that's just too much. <laughs> so I think that's the excuse we use not to do it. Uh, whereas, you know, in reality, in practicality, nobody's getting too much recognition, nobody. Wonderful. Now, Chester, if somebody wanted to find out more information on you and the many books you've written, where would they go? Well, um, uh, carrots.com is our website. We're also, you know, executives at the OC Tanner Company, so octanner.com is great. I started to do a lot of more tweeting and twittering, which is fun, and that's at Chester Elton. And uh, our blogs you can find at Chester Elton. Uh, dot com. But I, I love that you, the many books we've uh, written because we've written a new book that I'm sure you're going to ask me about. Absolutely. And what is that book? <laughs> well, I just happen to have one. Good for you. It's called The Orange Revolution. Here, maybe you should hold I it. I will. Yeah, there you go. And it's, uh, what we did is in this book, again, a research based, 350,000 surveys. Uh, with the great companies group on what builds great teams. We found that in, in organizations that there were always pockets of excellence. And what, what was it about these teams that, that transformed the entire organization? 
And we found that recognition was a key component, but not the only component. And we tell some great stories about Zappos.com and Pepsi Beverages Group, and even some historical stuff about uh, Thomas Edison, who's you know one of the great inventors. How did he just crank out so many great inventions? Well, he clearly didn't do it by himself. So yeah, it's a great read. We, we just got a, uh, a review from Publishers Weekly, and it put a star by it. And so uh, Adrian Gostick, my co-author, is a, a brilliant writer. We're, we're really pleased to to bring this to market and, and also available at fine bookstores everywhere. Well, perfect. Be sure to go pick up your copy. And Chester, thank you so much. No, really my pleasure. Thanks so much. We're big fans of jobbing. You know, let's go jobbing.